Shalom, sister. What's your name again? Maisha. Maisha. Maisha, I'm Aaron. Nice to meet you. Um, so I'm gonna just bring out a little bit of what I'm gonna touch on what the soldier is just bringing out. He yep. was showing you. Get Proverbs 4 and 23. We're, We're gonna show you exactly why we out here first and foremost. Right. Then why it's important for you to first know your nationality, so then you can know what's required of you. Right. You understand that? Right. Just like. If we don't know that we're God's chosen people and we're supposed to keep the commandments, why would we keep the commandments? Right. right. You understand that? So we just gonna show you something real quick. Proverbs 4 and 23. This is why we out here. And then we gonna show you the correlation of the Bible and how it actually applies to your life today. Right. Okay? Read that. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. So God says keep your heart with all diligence, meaning your mind. Your heart is your mind. That's what the Bible's talking about. It's your mind. Because your heart doesn't physically think, does it? No. Exactly. Your mind does. So your brain tells your heart what you do. Exactly. So your brain is actually your heart, according to the Bible. Your mind. So God said, keep thy heart with all diligence. Read on. For out of it are the issues of life. He says, for out of it, because when you don't apply God's laws, this is where your mind's supposed to be in God's laws. Right. When you don't apply God's laws, guess what happened? The issues of life. Just like, read it one more time. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out, out of it are the issues of life. So you hear that? God says, for out of it, when you don't have your mind on the laws and statutes that God gave to you, that's where the issues of life come. Like baby mamas and baby daddies. Who does that happen to? That happen to all people? Exactly. Predominantly who? So-called blacks, Hispanic, Native Indians, right? right? High crime rates in the bad neighborhoods. Who lives in the bad neighborhoods? Right. Does everybody live in the bad neighborhoods? As a nation, though, as a whole, as a multitude, who mostly lives in the ghettos? You ever been to a white ghetto? Let's bring it out. You ever been to a Chinese ghetto? Bring it out. Middle Eastern Arabian ghetto? You see these things? Right. So we're going to show you according to the Bible why it's important for you to know your nationality and why these things that are actually affecting you today, the Bible has the solution for us to get up out of that condition. Right. Think about it. We've tried a lot of things. We marched, haven't we marched, right? For years, on and on, 60s all the way up. Right. We still got gun violence in our neighborhood. We still killing each other every day. We still produce baby mamas and baby daddies. Right. We still got all the liquor stores in our neighborhoods. Right. Our black men, you said something earlier, and we gonna show you in the Bible how things are supposed to be. You brought up how black men abandon their children, right? right? I'm gonna show you that that's in the Bible. That was a prophecy. So let's get Deuteronomy 28, chapter 15. I mean, verse 15. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass. But it shall come to pass. This is Moses speaking to the so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Indians. And we're going to prove it further in this verse. But this was when they came up out of um, Egypt, when, um, when Pharaoh had them in hard bondage. So now they're in the wilderness. And that was the whole reason we went into Egypt the first time, for breaking God's commandments. So we was brought up out of Egypt, redeemed by God. And Moses is going to give us the game plan on how to live life once again. Right. So read that again from the top. Right. Get up. But it shall come to pass. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God said, if you will not hearken to his voice, hearken means listen. So you must listen first. So you listen now. I'll pray this with the most high. Read on. To observe, to do all his commandments mm -hmm. and his statutes, mm -hmm. which I command thee this day, mm -hmm. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So you hear that? God said, if you break my commandments, if you don't listen to what I told you to do, right. I'm going to send curses upon you. Right. Now, is a curse a good or a bad thing? Okay, well, we're going to show you the curses in the Bible. We're going to let you be the judge and see if they're good or bad, okay? Right. So we're going to read verse 46. Verse 46. And they, shall be I'm gonna show you. and they shall be upon thee for a sign uh -huh. and for a wonder. So it says, and they, meaning the curses, are going to be upon you for a sign and a wonder. It's upon us for a sign because a sign identifies exactly what something is. Just like you said, Walgreens. You, you know it because of that sign, right? Well, God said these curses or these punishments that's going to come, put across, um, come upon a specific people is going to be a sign to identify exactly who they are, right. that they're God's chosen people. Right. You understand that? So now, let's get one of the curses, because you just, you brought up an excellent, um, you brought up a... something about uh, some, some women that were probably prostituted, they, they, uh, they were the ones that were prostituted, and they were the ones that were prostituted, they something that was going on, they were... I'm going to show you about that, I'm going to show you about that. Let's, let's get this curse, okay? Because we got to identify, we got to show you who you are. 
So let's get verse 48. Enemy, chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. So God said, because you broke my commandments, remember verse 15, he was going to curse us. So now that curse is just a punishment. So he said, read that again. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemy. So God said, you're going to serve your enemies. So he said, he gonna, you're going to serve your enemies because you didn't want to keep my commandments. Now I'm going to send your enemies against you. Read on. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. You see that? God actually sent the enemies against us because we broke his commandments. Read on. In hunger. In hunger. So now. So, if the devil is not only our enemy, who else is? I'm about to show you. That's an excellent question. Yeah, Just up. listen and I'm going to show you. Right. Yes, sir. I'm going to get to you one second. So that's an excellent question. If the devil, we taught that the devil, just like the brother, just like soldier brought out, the devil or a spiritual being, that's that's the devil. No, or your enemy. We're gonna show you what God said. So read that again from the top. Therefore, shalt thou serve thy enemy. God said you're gonna serve your enemies because you broke my commandments. Right. Read on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. So he said, which the Lord sent against you. He sent his enemies against us. Now it's a thing to identify exactly who your enemies are right. according to God. Read on. In hunger. In hunger. So now, when you see you see these signs here, and when we was in slavery, had yokes of iron upon our neck a couple hundred years ago. Um, when we was hungry, what happened? Could we just eat on our own, on our own will? Exactly. We had to go to who? Who do we have to go to? Exactly. So you know that is in history, right? We reading the same thing in the Bible. Right. So he said in hunger, meaning you're going to have to go to them with food on that plantation. Now let's fast forward to today, because this is what we are here to do. Show the correlation of today as well. But no, it's not just that simple. I'm going to show you. When you want to go, when you want food, you have to go to a store, right? And purchase the food. Well, let's say we go to Walmart. Do we own that as a nation of people? Is that our store? No, right? So guess what? God said your enemies, that you're going to have to go to them in hunger. When you want some food, you're going to have to go to them. Um, any other store you can think of, if you want a burger from McDonald's, um, wherever, you got to go to another nation of people because we don't own things in this country where we can feed ourselves. Right. You agree? Exactly. So God is identifying your enemy. And it's not just a so-called white man because guess what? If you want some Chinese food, who you go to? Exactly. So you're going to another nation of people. God said your enemies is going to be all the people you have to go to in hunger. Read on. And in thirst. So we know we don't own the water companies because we don't pay our water bill. What happened? They cut it off, right? We own that as a nation of people? No. We don't own that. Read on. Um, that's an excellent question. If he has his own company, but this these curses fit um, the nation of people. It's not a specific. Yeah, we know some black people doing good for themselves here in this country. Or what they think they're doing good for themselves. But it's not about just that specific person. As a nation, we still at the bottom of the totem pole. Right, we right, at the right. bottom economically. We have to go to everybody else. That that black man with that business or these several other black men and women it, um, who has their businesses, they can't provide all the things we need. Right. Hey, bro, what's your question? And I'm going to get back to you. What's your question, bro? The proper way to repent? Huh? Okay, all praises on both sides. Excellent question. What's your name? They call me Realist. Realist? Okay, I'm Aaron, bro. That's an excellent question. That's what we are here to do. Let's get that. You said two excellent things. You said, what's the proper way to pray? Let's get First Kings 8. Let's get First Kings 8. And then you said, how do you repent? We're going to show you. Proper way to repent. That's an excellent question. You listening, sister? This is very valuable information right here. So let's get that. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Kings chapter 8, verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. We know that all men have sinned. Sin, when you read in 1 John 3 and 4, it tells you that it's just breaking God's laws. So that's what sin is. So we know we sin. We break God's law all the time, right? Read on. And thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy so that, they, so that they carry them away captives until the land of the enemy. Stop. So that's going into just what we was bringing out for the sister. We broke God's commandments in Deuteronomy 28 and 15. And guess what happened? He put us in slavery. He put us in subjection to another people. That was a punishment that he put upon us. So read on. So that they carried them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near. Yet 
If they shall bethink themselves. So now we getting into how to break God and, and how to repent at the same time. Right. This is scripture that tells you both. God said, yet if you will bethink yourselves, bethink means to remember. Right. Remember the heritage of all of your forefathers, what they did. Okay, all praises. Read on. So God said, but think yourself, remember, right? Read on. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they were carried captive. When we carry captive on slave ships still here in America right. and all over the world. Right. Exactly. Read on. So we're reading this, and you know this true because these same things happen in history, and we're literally reading it out of the Bible. Read on. And repent. You hear that? And repent. Right. Read on. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, we have sinned and have done perversely. So now the first step of repentance, you have to acknowledge what you was doing in the first place, transgressing God's laws, you was dead wrong. You weren't supposed to be doing that. So you gotta acknowledge it, right? As a matter of fact, think about this. When you go to Alcoholics Anonymous and these, these different programs they have set up, what's the first thing they tell you to do? You got to acknowledge that you got a problem right. before you can get over that problem. Right. That's the same thing God said with us. You got to acknowledge you was breaking the law in order to start keeping the law. Right. Um, keep going. We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. So you hear that? We have to repent as a nation of people, admit that we done wrong. Read on. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, uh -huh. which led them away captive, uh -huh. and pray unto thee toward the land. So you hear what God said? He said, and pray. Now we get into prayer toward. Exactly. We have to turn away from our enemies, go back to God's laws. And when we pray, God said, pray toward your land. So where's your land? Let's get that in um, Galatians. We're going to show you where your land is. We're going to show you how you're supposed to pray and give you repentance all in one. I'll pray to the most high. That's an excellent question, bro. It's an excellent question. Read that. We're going to show you your land. Because a lot of times, we've been taught where we come from. Africa, exactly. But when you really dig a little deeper, you'll learn that we actually didn't come from Africa. We came from Jerusalem. And then we were sieged in Jerusalem by the Romans in 70 AD. They pushed us into Africa. So we, we fled into Africa, and Christ prophesied about that. We fled into Africa, and from there, we fled in there just to blend in with the so-called Africans, because we're not the same. And guess what? They knew we weren't their people, so we got pushed down further, and then they sold us, along with all the other nations, into captivity to the white man. That's how we got there. So read that. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. So you hear that? Jerusalem, right? Read on. Which is the mother of us all. Nah, Africa. Which is Jerusalem, which is the mother of us all. So you hear what God said? If you believe in the Bible, you know that God said Jerusalem is the motherland, not Africa. So now, let's get Acts 3.19. We're going to show you exactly how to repent. That's an excellent question. You get you get everything so far? Yeah. All praises. All praises. Because this is what we are here to do. Teach our people repentance. <laughs> what we don't realize is that we read it earlier in Proverbs 4 and 23. Keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your mind on God's laws. Because when you don't, that's where the issues of life come in. That's why we get shot down in the street. That's why the police harass us. These are the, this is why we have baby mamas, baby daddies on the lowest in poverty. These are the reasons for those things, not keeping God's laws. It's a simple solution. Go back to what God said. Exactly, and that's what we out here to show our people. How to keep God's laws and what laws they're supposed to be keeping. All right, read that. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. You hear what God said? He said, repent meaning turn back away from the sins that you was doing, transgressing his laws. He said, and be converted. Conversion means to change. Just like if you ever seen Transformers, what happened? It converts to another car. It changes. Same thing. That's what God's telling you to do spiritually. Change from what you've been doing before. Read on. That your sins may be blotted out. So you see how wonderful our God is, the true black Messiah? He said, if you really repent, you acknowledge your sins. I'm going to blot all that out. I mean, I'm going to give you a clean slate. Read on. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So now we're going to show you what's going to convert you, what's going to lead you to true repentance. You ready? Yeah. 
Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So it says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Meaning when you read all these laws in the Bible, any law that's in the Bible, nothing is bad when you follow that law. Nothing bad comes from it. But when you don't follow the laws, for example, if I'm a thief, what happened? Somebody can see me stealing, I get locked up. Somebody can shoot me down. You see how the bad things happen when we break God's laws? This is ABC. This is simple things that we're trying to get our people to understand that this is what we have to do. Repent. So read that again. The law. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. God said the law of the Lord is perfect. Read on. Converting the soul. So the law simply is the only thing that's going to convert you or change you and bring you to true repentance. Let's get one more. Matthew 18. Matthew 18. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you something else, too. Let's get Leviticus 19, 28. We're going to show you something, bro, because all praise to the most High, you up here talking to us. Right. Because we're going to show you your true nationality, why it's important to know, and why you have to keep God's laws. So you can wake up, and you can learn this knowledge, and go teach it to your brothers and sisters. Right. And you can be on this side out here teaching your people that they have to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. Because you understand, I can tell you understand, that the reason we're in the condition we're in is what? Because we keep breaking God's laws. Right. It's our fault. Okay, I'm a, is that, that's an excellent question. Yeah, we are. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you that. Read this. Uh, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. So now we're going to give you a law, okay? Because remember, the law is going to convert you. You got to acknowledge, and then you got to do what God said. Read on. You shall not make cut. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh. You hear that? It says you should not make any cuttings in your flesh. What is that talking about? Yeah, I read that. I read that. Exactly. Tattoos, you know. Okay, all praise, and you stop. So we're just giving you one law right here. Now we're going to give you a law that you keep it. We're going to give you a law that you keep it, and we pray you continue to keep it. Let's get um, Leviticus chapter 21. Uh-huh. We're going to give you a law that you keep it. All praises to the most high. So you understand that. No more tattoos, right? And remember, God said when you truly repent, you don't get no more. All them tattoos, God said, I'm blotting that out. He a new man. I'm starting over with him. Read that again. Read this. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Uh -huh. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So God said we ain't supposed to bald our head, how that Michael Jordan look. We ain't supposed to bald our head. Uh -huh. Or we ain't supposed to shave off our beards either. So I see your beard growing. Continue to let that grow, brother. Because like, don't, don't shave it up. Don't shave, you know? No, you can shave it up. You can shape it up. But you cannot trim it down and make it bald. You can't have that bald face. Because a beard is a sign of manly dignity. Exactly. Always keep exactly hair on your face because this is commandment of God. This is part of one of your first steps to repentance right here. Now you know, so what you got to do? It's a requirement for you, right? Exactly. You got to keep. Let's get another law. Let's get, um, what? Numbers 15. And what kind of food you eat as well? What kind of stuff you eat? You eat pork? You don't eat no pork? Okay, all praises. What about shrimp? Crab? Lobster? Okay, all praises. All praises. You know that's another law? Okay, and this, I'm glad you said that because we're going to give you a prophecy. We're going to show you another law real quick. Read that. Numbers. Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. You hear that? God says, speak unto the children of Israel. You know who the children of Israel are? The so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Indians. That's who we are as a nation. As a matter of fact, where is your nationality, bro? Virgin Islands? You would be, you see on this... They're Puerto Ricans? Your people are Puerto Ricans? Okay, so okay, so what's your father? What's your father? What's his national? Okay, but what what would he be classified as? Or your grandfather? What is your grandfather? Puerto Rican? Okay, on this sign here, what do you see next to the Puerto Ricans? Because you know Puerto Ricans, that came, what what you see? Ephraim, exactly. So you know Puerto Rican, you know where that came from? You know any history about that? Why they call y'all Puerto Rican? When they came, when the so-called white man came over and he conquered the so-called Puerto Ricans or the Ephraimites, your true biblical name, and they conquered you, y'all had a lot of riches in that land. Y'all had riches in that land. So guess what they did? They stole it from you. They called it Port of Riches. Are you a Port of Riches? Are you a Port of Riches? Yeah. No, you're not. 
You ain't a, a place called Puerto Rico. You're not, you're not that. Exactly. So that was a slave name given to you by your oppressor. God never called you that. That's why you never see Puerto Rican in the Bible or African American or um, West Indian or Jamaican. You never see those terms in the Bible because God ain't dealing with a Puerto Rican. God ain't dealing with a Jamaican or a Haitian or when you're still calling yourself your slave name. God said, I'm dealing with you when you keep the commandments, you repent and you know your true nationality. Okay, so um, let's get Numbers 15 verse 38 because this is another law, bro, that you got to keep. Now that you know you an Israelite, I'll praise the most high. Read that. Numbers chapter 15 verse 38 Speak unto the children of Israel And bid them That they make them fringes In the borders of their garments So God says speak unto the children of Israel And bid them, command them That they make them fringes in the borders of their garments That's what you see that all these brothers have on Up here, you can even see these brothers up there So you see what we have on They're fringes That's what they're called, fringes Now this is a commandment that God gave us, right? Read on and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generations. So throughout our generations, meaning as long as we here still generating, right. making more babies, generations growing up, and the next generation, God said you still got to keep this commandment. Right. This right. commandment ain't done away with. Right. Exactly. Every day. Right. Read on. Any garment you put on, brother, you got to have fringes. And we're going to show you the importance of it as well. Read that. Read on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So you see upon everybody's fringes that you see out here, there's a border of blue. Because this is a commandment. So now we're going to see why we're supposed to wear these fringes, though. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. Uh-huh. That ye may look upon it. So now, the reason why we wear these fringes, God commanded it first and foremost. This right. is part of repentance. But God said, this is going to be something that's going to help you actually keep my law. So he said, you look upon your fringe, read on, and remember all the commandments of the Lord. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. For example, I'll give you another one, um, another example. Remember I was talking about if you was a thief, something bad could happen to you? Well, if you're an Israelite and you know you're supposed to keep the commandments and you know that God said you ain't supposed to be stealing from nobody and you might have that urge to steal, God said, look upon your fringes. Remember, I'm an Israelite. I'm a chosen of God. I'm putting my whole salvation on the line if I steal that. That's got to be your mindset because you got to do what God says. You understand that? Read on. That you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. So you hear that? It's two steps to it. You look upon your fringes, you remember, damn, I'm an Israelite. I can't be stealing nothing. Then you got to do it. It's, it's easy. One, um, you you know anybody that's so? Anybody that's so? Okay, okay, okay. Well, this, this is what we can do for you, brother. If you really want to make this happen, you got our information, you call the school, you get in touch with us. You come visit, you come visit us. Yes, sir, it's on the back of the, it's on the, back of the um, flyer, very back, very back. Right here, yeah, right there and right there. So make sure you remember that information. You come visit us, you start learning with us. All you gotta do is bring us some shirts. Once we see that you actually gonna be diligent, we gonna be our brother's keeper. Right. Bring us some shirts. We'll have, our, we'll have some women put some fringes on there for you. Right. You'll have fringes, bro, because you want to keep God's commandments. Right. So there's going to be a process to getting those fringes. And that's why the most I set that stumbling block in front of you, like, oh, dang, I don't got nobody to put no fringes on my clothes right now. That's because God said, I don't want them to be, if I, if I had somebody for him to put um, fringes on right now, that brother might get them fringes and then don't want to congregate. Right. God like, okay, I'm going to have that brother, um, he can't, he don't got no way to get no fringes, so. I'm going to send them to the school to congregate, to learn. Then they're going to they gonna help the brother out. Okay. This song's 111 and 10. Yes, sir. Exactly. Exactly. So the brother said he reads the Bible, but it's hard for him to understand it. And I was the same way. And we're going to show you exactly why that is so. Read this. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God says the fear of the Lord 
for, you gotta have that healthy fear for the Lord. Just going back to the commandments, you know if you if you don't keep God's commandments, you fear that something bad is gonna happen to you. So it said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Read on. A good understanding. You heard that? A good understanding. So when you read that Bible, only way you're gonna understand, read on. Have all day to do his commandments. You hear that? You gotta start doing God's commandments. Then he's gonna take that spiritual block off and give you more wisdom. Right. That's what's gonna happen. Bring it out. So this is what we ought to do, teach our people. We gotta keep the commandments. We gotta start applying God's laws. We do everything else under the sun and we wonder why we get a bad result, a result that never profit us. That's the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and over and over and expecting a different result. Right. You ain't gonna get no different result. Right. God said you gonna keep getting jacked up if you don't keep my commandments. And that's what's happening to us as a nation of people. You understand that? All praises. Now, how do you love God, bro? All praises, all praises. Exactly. So have a lot of us, bro. I can hear it. I can hear it in your voice. Read that. The book of First John, chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God. You hear that? We finna read to you what the love of God, how you love God exactly according to what God said. We ain't write these words. We just abiding by what God said. So he said, this is the love of God. Read on. That we keep his commandments. You hear that? You got to keep God's commandments if you really love him. You understand that? And all praise to the most. That's how we prove love right? Exactly. Because love is actually an action word. Right. What we taught a lot of time is that love is a hug. Love is a kiss. That ain't what God is talking about, loving one another. As a matter of fact, let's get Leviticus 19.17. Because we're going to show you, if we actually Im implemented the love of God, how that would instantly make a better situation and a better um, area for our people in the communities that they're in. It will improve our conditions. Right. Just by loving God. Right. Just by loving God. Read this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So this is actually a commandment that God gave us. He said, thou shalt not hate your brother in your heart. So let's see what God means about that. Read on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So God said, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, meaning you, if you, if me and you, we brothers, you know you're Israelite, we both got our fringes on. We've been studying. You know, we know we got to keep the commandments. If I say, bro, I'm ready to go hit this lick over there. You know, these brothers got a couple pounds of weed. I'm ready to go hit this lick. What you supposed to do as my brother? No, bro, exactly. Tell me no, bro, you out the spirit because you will get judged for doing that. So you gotta warn me. If you don't warn me, you don't love me. That's what God says. Now think about if we did that with each other in our communities. Knowing brothers finna go do something they ain't got no business doing. And we say, exactly. They are Exactly. Now I'm going to show you the importance of keeping that law. Let's get Leviticus 5 and 1. Because everything goes back to God's laws. Everything. It goes back to keeping God's laws. So read that. Leviticus chapter 5 verse 1. And if a soul sin. So God said if a soul sin, meaning he already conjuring up that thought. I'm finna go hit this lid. Read on. And hear the voice of swear. So if anybody even hear him say that, just like you said, they always tell somebody. It's a reason for that. Read on. And is a witness. So if you're a witness to it, because you heard of it, read on. Whether he have seen or known of it. So whether you seen it or if you even heard of it. God don't care if you seen it or heard of it, read on. If he do not utter it. So if you don't rebuke that brother, rebuke your neighbor, read on. Then he shall bear his iniquity. God said right. you might as well went and robbed that brother. Right. You understand that? Yeah. So you going to bear that iniquity. I'll pray this to the most high. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. 
Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube channels. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.